G'day, I'm Bernard Gaynor and welcome to the second episode of my show for the new conservative media platform in Australia, The Good Source. I'm still searching for the right name for this show and I'd like to throw it open to you for your ideas. If you have any suggestions, please send them through. First, we saw violent riots and looting. This is just a snapshot of some of the damage the people will be waking up to in Soho. Through the night, protesters smashed into luxury stores, stealing items and clashing with police. And then we saw statues pulled down by the mob. <laughs> the response, defund the police. The move comes after City Council President Lisa Bender vowed to dismantle the police department, replacing it with a new model for public safety. And a nonchalant, who cares from Nancy Pelosi? Pelosi is third in line to the president and the most powerful Democrat in America. I don't care that much about statues. Respectfully, shouldn't that be done by a commission or the city council, not a mob in the middle of the night throwing it into the harbor? People will do what they do. Lest you shrug your shoulders because all of this happened in America, this nonsense is spreading in Australia too. We've seen the first outbreaks of violence. A confronting end to a peaceful day. Police pepper spraying protesters at Sydney Central Station after the Black Lives Matter march. And even woke professional sporting codes in Australia have sent a message that everyone must submit. Richmond and Collingwood players have taken a knee in support of the Black Lives Matter movement and the Cats and Hawks will follow suit tonight. Whatever your political persuasion, it is inevitably true that whatever happens in America will affect Australia. Indeed, as you just saw, we're already taking a knee in support of a protest movement in America that channels its funding through Act Blue, an organisation that exists only to raise money cut for America's version of the Labor Party and that has donated billions to radical leftist and socialist candidates. One way or the other, the civil war in America for the soul of Western civilization will be felt here too. Indeed, anyone with eyes to see knows that we are already in this civil war. On one side are those who would tear down the West and replace it with literally anything else. If this side wins, we'll get that dangerous anything else too. I'll get to that at the end of this video. This side supports things like open borders and decries you as racist if you're concerned that anti-freedom and violent philosophies are being imported into our nation. This side also hypocritically supports COVID-19 lockdowns for everyone except radical leftist protesters and believes that the state should lock you up for eating kebabs in a park while releasing violent criminals onto the streets. It has a hatred for the conventional nuclear family and even concepts like the fact that a mother is a woman. This side is comprised of revolutionaries and, our, and anarchists. On the other side are those who believe that the West, based on its Christian principles and philosophies, has brought the highest ideals of civilization to the world. This side believes that the West has far more to celebrate than condemn and that it has provided families and nations with freedom and prosperity. This side is comprised of patriots, those who seek truth and justice and those who love the value and those who love and value freedom and order. I know which side I'm on, and it's pretty clear which side President Trump is on as well. On the 3rd of July, US President Donald Trump gave one of the most remarkable speeches of any major world leader in recent history. Have a listen. We are proud of the fact that our country was founded on Judeo-Christian principles, and we understand that these values have dramatically advanced the cause of peace and justice throughout the world. We know that the American family is the bedrock of American life. We recognize the solemn right and moral duty of every nation to secure its borders. And we are building the wall.
We remember that governments exist to protect the safety and happiness of their own people. A nation must care for its own citizens first. We must take care of America first. It's time. We believe in equal opportunity, equal justice, and equal treatment for citizens of every race, background, religion, and creed. Every child of every color, born and unborn, is made in the holy image of God. We want free and open debate, not speech codes and cancel culture. We embrace tolerance, not prejudice. We support the courageous men and women of law enforcement. We will never abolish our police or our great Second Amendment, which gives us the right to keep and bear arms. We believe that our children should be taught to love their country, honor their history, and respect our great American flag. We stand tall, we stand proud, and we only kneel to Almighty God. This is who we are. This is what we believe. And these are the values that will guide us as we strive to build an even better and greater future. Those who seek to erase our heritage want Americans to forget our pride and our great dignity so that we can no longer understand ourselves or America's destiny. In toppling the heroes of 1776, they seek to dissolve the bonds of love and loyalty that we feel for our country and that we feel for each other. Their goal is not a better America. Their goal is to end America. That speech was remarkable for two reasons. Firstly, because of what Trump said. And secondly, because Trump had the courage to say it. Let's go through each point in a little detail. Until five minutes ago, what Trump said in itself would have generated more yawns than raised eyebrows. Even if it has been clear for some time that the attack on Western civilization that we are living through had been unleashed. It has been accepted by politicians from all political backgrounds that open debate was necessary, that those who work in law enforcement should be respected, that there is a right to self-defense. No one argued that the flag, the nation and its history should not be celebrated. And even acknowledging God was ingrained in a civilization that knew that its progress, principles and philosophies were derived from Christianity. All of these things were so taken for granted that the only people who opposed them were immediately, and rightly, recognised to be dangerous extremists. So politicians from all persuasions firstly stood on a united ticket on these principles, then they gave them lip service, and then they forgot to speak about them altogether. That is why speeches from presidents and prime ministers have focused on things like tax cuts, economic agendas, and foreign policy priorities. But all of that has changed, and quickly. The crisis has arrived. So firstly, it is remarkable that an American president has even found himself in a situation where he had to give a speech defending the very bedrock of Western civilization's principles against attack from within. Secondly, it was Donald Trump who gave this speech. No one else could. It is a testament to the character and courage of this man. Trump is a man with a complex background. I must admit that I remain skeptical sometimes as to whether he truly believes what he says, 
and whether he has the capacity to defend what he believes. But it appears that Donald Trump, albeit imperfect, has changed his views from those held by liberal revolutionaries to those championed by conservative counter-revolutionaries. And regardless, right now, someone needed to give the speech that Trump gave. Yet no one else has had the courage to do this, even as this crisis has been spiralling out of control. No major conservative leader in the world has been prepared to say what Trump just did. I just ask you, could you imagine Scott Morrison saying the basic things that Trump just did? No. We all know that Malcolm Turnbull never would. And even Tony Abbott balked at speaking with Trump's clarity, directness and simplicity. This highlights how oppressive the environment we live in and the loser-like mentality of the majority of the conservative class who have spent so much of their lives trying to avoid the criticism of the radical left that they have forgotten how to fight. Trump, if nothing else, has shown us how we need to fight. Of course, the reaction to Donald Trump's speech has been concocted outrage and sheer deceit. Mainstream media organisations have claimed that Trump is fanning racial hatred, even though he defended the values of a nation that millions have flocked to from all the corners of the globe for its opportunities. And Trump defended the legacy of a nation that defeated Hitler and communist Russia. America, for all its faults, has been a shining light for this world. It, plays, it played a huge role in the defence of Australia in World War II. Without a strong United States, our lives would have been altered and far for the worse. Without a strong United States into the future, we face just as much danger. The level of hatred from the elites, the media, high society, one whole side of politics and much of the other for Donald Trump is so great that it now seems obvious that these people would happily see America destroyed just to remove him from office. The American justice and intelligence system was politically corrupted to spy on Trump during the 2016 election and a false and fake Russian hoax conspiracy was used to destabilize his pres presidency. The senior US military officer has apologized for being taken in a photo with President Trump and former US military officers are now openly writing articles calling on the US military to defy Donald Trump's orders. This may all be a phase and order may be restored. But I think we all know that worse is yet to come. It is impossible to know just what is around the corner, but we do know that the communist Chinese regime will be rubbing its hands with glee. It should come as no surprise that while America is gripped in turmoil, China is cracking down on freedom in Hong Kong. If America continues to collapse, this danger will come much closer to Australia. But we should remember, if that hell does come, it will only be because Western civilization self-destructed first. But that has not happened completely yet. For that reason alone, all Australians have a vested interest in the success of Donald Trump. God bless him. If you like this video, click like and subscribe to this channel. The Good Source is Australia's newest and most needed conservative platform. We need your help. Any support you can provide will keep this channel going. The Bernard Gaynor Show is a production of The Good Source, hosted by Bernard Gaynor. To watch, listen to, or read more content without the SJW PC fact filter, visit goodsource.news. Good, S-A-U-C-E dot news. Become a Good Source supporter for exclusive access to live and unedited interview recordings, including the conversations before and after the show.